enough editing for today. Time to go and get some real work done. And by real work, I mean a night with a car that hasn't featured on this channel for a long time. And this little car didn't get much love when it first featured on this channel, but hopefully I can resurrect it, show it some love and get it back on the road. Yes, you guessed it, it is the little Toyota Yaris. We've got quite a list of jobs to do to get that car back on the road. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do tonight. And if you're wondering why the hell I've gone and bought a Toyota Yaris, hit the banner in the corner and go and check out the first video. But before I go anywhere near that unit, I am starving. So let's see what we've got from our sponsor this week, HelloFresh. If you're like me and you're always struggling to decide what to have for your evening meal, these guys have got you covered. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I am absolutely sick of wasting food. And that is why I love this, because everything comes perfectly measured. Even more perfect for us, these meals are so simple and so quick to do. There are absolutely loads of recipes to choose from, loads of meals. Everything looks absolutely delicious. I cannot wait to try this. And just like that, food is sorted. So, what are you waiting for? Go and check out the link in the description below and go and save yourself a massive 60% off your first box using code EVILGT60 and then get yourself another 25% off the next eight boxes. What are you waiting for? Go and check it out. In the meantime, I've got to sort this Yaris. Today feels like it's been a long time coming, but finally we have the Yaris on the ramp. So with the Focus nearly finished, and the Cooper nearly finished, we finally have some time to get to work on this Yaris SR. So in a previous video, we took this car for a bit of a pre-MOT inspection, and we got quite a long list of things that it needed to definitely get it through its next MOT. And underneath here is all the goodies that we're gonna need for exactly that job. So with a bit of help from Ash, our grumpy mechanic who doesn't wanna be on camera, We'll hopefully get these bits on, get this car through its MOT, and then we can get to work on the real job, which is strapping a big turbocharger to it. So on today's agenda we have trailing arm bushes, top mounts, pommel filter, wishbones, another top mount, another wishbone, and rear springs. The petrol filler neck, and a fuel filter. But just before we start with any of them bits, we've noticed that the rear brake lines are heavily corroded right at the end. So we're gonna get them off, get them to Dean. Dean at VBT is gonna make us up some brand new copper lines. We'll get them on and we can crack on with the rest of the MOT bits. So whilst Ash got to work removing the rear axle, he asked me to get involved and start prepping the front subframe ready to lower that down shortly after. That meant giving the bolts a good dose of WD-40, giving them a clean up with a wire brush, and then just undoing them enough to remove them shortly after. Ash then ratchet strapped the back of the car down to the lift's arms, just in case once we've removed the rear axle, it then wanted to try and tip forward off the lift. The boy is clever after all. So that's the rear axle off the car. As you can see, the trailing arm bushes are completely good. They've seen better days then, they're goose. So we'll press these out, get new ones in. Before we do that, we have got to get the front subframe off because there's bushes in the wishbones that have gone. It was quicker and easier and just as cheap to get brand new wishbones. So we're going to change the whole wishbone, which obviously has new bushes in, because that is much easier. And that's what we do here on Evil GT. We just do the easiest route. So we're struggling to get the nuts off the ball joint. It's proving to be a bit difficult, but I bought a new toy. And just like that, with the blowtorch, we've got it out. Just goes to show, noisy bastard, just goes to show that when you've got the right tools, it makes life so much easier. That blowtorch really has been the best 70 quid I've ever spent, I think. Once we got the rest of the bolts out anyway, we lowered it down with the transmission jack. With the subframe out of the way, it makes it way easier to get to the connectors at the top of the brake lines. The rest is just clipped and they remove dead easy. So with the rear brake lines off, I'm gonna take these now to VBT and Dean will very kindly make me up some copper ones, some brand new ones. Um, but also, I do just need to point out, Ash, the grumpy mechanic who doesn't wanna be on camera, he has just said, listen, you need to make sure that you explain to your viewers that I've not took the subframe off just to change the wishbones. I'm not a dickhead. So the reason why, what? Yeah, you are. <laughs> you just said you're not a dickhead. But the reason why was because a little while ago, me and Lee, I say a little while ago, ages ago, me and Lee attempted to get these subframe bolts out. And as you can quite clearly see, that one snapped. We left this one, we've only just took that one out, but this one completely snapped. It was before we had like WD-40 or anything. Lee smashed his face into this brake caliper. And it was quite funny, but he did hurt himself. 
Uh, so we just left it, we parked it up and left it, it's been here ever since. So um, that was the reason why we've took the subframe off because we need to now give it some heat, get some mole grips on it and see if we can sort of wiggle it out. I don't know, we're gonna have a go anyway. So we have a bit of a shopping list in addition to what they said for the MOT. This drop link boot has split somewhere on there. I can't remember whether it's that side or that side. Oh, it's just there, look, you can see it. Just there, that's all split, that drop link is knackered. The gearbox dog bone mount thing is absolutely goosed. That inside is, uh, yeah, is completely gone. And also, the subframe bolt, which I just showed you, this is obviously the, the one that isn't snapped, but I'm gonna see if I can get two of these as well from Toyota. Now, because nothing is ever simple or straightforward on Evil GT, I've just been to Toyota and I've asked them for two of these. They don't have them in stock, of course you don't. Not only that, it's gonna be 48 hours and they are just over 10 pounds each for one of these bolts. Joke. So that was about 22 quid. I think it was 20, uh, 11 pound each, something like that. So I've ordered two of these, that's done. They don't, or they do have the gearbox mount. So this sort of, this mount thing here, whatever this dog bone thing is, they'd need to order that in. 160 odd pound or something. The car was a thousand pound. I'm definitely not paying nearly 200 pound for one of them. Autodox got one for 27 pound, but we're gonna have to wait a week or two. So that's how we're gonna do it. We have, however, ordered two new drop links from Euro Car Parts for the pair, £15.50, bargain. So for those wondering what that mount looks like, the one that was £160 from Toyota, but £27 of water dog, it's literally just this bit here, otherwise known as the dog bone mount, I think. So I'm going to order another one, and hopefully that gets here sharpish. If you're wondering what all the sparks are about, it's because the bush, this just here, as you can see, has this lip at the edge, so that's obviously gonna stop us trying to press it out because it's gonna be pressing against itself with that lip. So we've had to grind the lip off the edge of this old bush so that we can get the pressing tool, one of these things, around the edge to actually push it out. That's the plan anyway. So this is proving to be bit of a nightmare because we think the actual threads on the bar that you use to pull the bush through that bush is in there so tight that it's like stretching the threads almost and you can see the bar twisting um, he's resorted to violence I think Just like that, we have one absolutely butchered old bush. New trailing arm bushes are in. We are good to go. Hopefully now we can get this axle back on the car. Next up, these rear springs. So obviously with an absolute load of help from me, we are now getting there with this rear axle. The new springs are in, the new trailing arm bushes are in. What's next on this now, Ash? Put it back together. We do still need to put the fuel filler pipe, the filler neck bit, back up into that hole there. Hopefully you can see that. Um, but otherwise, yeah, we are, we are slowly but surely getting there now. So the exhaust manifold, we actually tried to get the exhaust off a good while ago and we snapped the bolts that were in it. Now, in order to get this through its MOT, as you guys know, I do need to get a proper exhaust on it to get it through. Fingers crossed. With this, if we can get the bolts out, we can get an exhaust made, get it through its MOT, then it needs to come off again so I can put the turbo manifold on because obviously we're turbo in it. Next up are our top of the range drop links. These are Starline branded. £15.50 £15 for two. Absolute bargain. Especially when you're getting you know, absolute top of the range products as well. Amazing what we do on this channel. Fast forward 24 hours and Dean at VBT has very kindly sorted us out some new brake lines that Ash has already... Listen, I can't leave this lad alone for two seconds. He's already putting them on but these are going to be absolutely perfect to fit back in this original fixing here the flex pipe that goes into the caliper obviously so these maybe a little bit of manipulation but they should be absolutely bang on the shiny new replacement brake lines are all in looking brilliant hopefully they do the trick next up top mounts for the front suspension this is what happens when you're working on smaller cars right we need to get to the top of this strut but there's no bolts here, like this is what I'm used to taking these three bolts out in like a triangle. This obviously got one big one underneath this cap here, but then the whole scuttle panel was in the way. 
So now we've got to remove the whole scuttle panel. Then this is still in the way, this metal bit, but then it's attached to the wiper motor and mechanism. So we've got to take the wiper motor and mechanism out. Thanks Ash, here's what I did earlier. And then we've got to get to this, because there's a 10 mil just down there, which hopefully you can, uh, you can see, just down there. So we've got to get that out, which will hopefully then get this metal bit out, all to just get that, that bolt there. Now tell me why this needs to be this deep, why can't you just put a cut out there? Tell me why. This is what happens when you're working with somebody who's whinging all the time. He's clearly rubbing off on me now, complaining about scuttle panels. Anyway, once we got all that off, it was dead easy to get to the two bolts at the top of the struts and they pulled out nice and easy. Struts are out, these springs are absolutely fine, but apparently the top mounts are not, so we're gonna to get to replacing them next. Now Ash is very apprehensive about using my spring clamp thing, short, no, what they called then? Spring Compressors. Clamps. Compressors because they look like they're from uh, AliExpress. Um, but they're gonna do the job, mate, you'll be fine. What's this? That's your bearing. Okay. Has you oh, has you come with the bearing? Oh, I think it has actually come with the bearing. Has it? Let's have a look, see what we've got. We obviously, as you know on this channel, we only do top of the range stuff. So I'll see what we got from Autodoc. And yes, mate, there's your new top mount and your new bearing as well. And there we are, top mounts, fitted, no help from Ash whatsoever then. All he did was give me loads of grief and moan about the fact I got wrong tools. I didn't know what I was doing. I was complaining about the work he was doing. This is a tough relationship, let me tell you. Where's Lee? Anyway, when you need him, let's replace him back for Lee. Next up is bleeding the brakes. I'm gonna crack on with that now. What's that noise? What is that noise? I mean, uh, I've never heard a noise like that pressing the brake pedal before. <laughs> For God's sake! Right, so now Ash has finished ripping me about my tyres on my Yaris, which they all seem to be, apart from one actually, we've got a Yoko here. This is the uh, only one that keeps going flat, but the rest of them are from China. So what does that tell you? The rest of them seem to be staying up and sound, but that Yoko keeps going down. We know it needs new tyres, proper tyres, because it's gonna have a million horsepower, this thing, so it will need loads. We still have the fuel filler neck to do. Uh, I can't find the bolts because we took it off ages ago so hopefully we can find some bolts to fit we're just doing a little bit of market research on our aptani tires that quite clearly say underneath made in china so we're just doing a little bit of market research ash how much do you reckon a brand spanking new aptani tire made in china is three pound <laughs> no a little bit more than that <laughs> um they are 45 pounds each it doesn't come uh, under the worst tire purpose. brands you should avoid. Really? No. It doesn't? No. All right, well that's why they've bought two then. Good Ride, Westlake, Chiang, Compass, Telride, YKS and AKS. There you go. So uh, you heard it here first. This one is actually a 21. You can see how much more tread that has. This one, what was it say this was? A 17? 17. This is a 17 made in the 23rd week of 2017. Got a lot less tread on it. So these were so good, whoever had it previously bought another one. Fast forward a day and the new bolts arrived. These were 11 pounds each. Um, one of them Lee snapped, so you owe me 11 quid Lee. And I had to buy the other one anyway because the other one had seen better days. But they're both in. We'll get the engine mount back in, which is the original, not engine mount, transmission mount, whatever you want to call it, to this. We're going to put the original one back in because from Toyota, these things from Toyota are about 160 quid, bought from Japan for an original one, shipped, it was 75 pounds. So it was 95 dollars, 75 pounds for one shipped from Japan, three to six days. But for now, because we want to get this off the ramp, I'm going to put the original one back in so we can at least move it. And, um, and yeah, we'll get the new one in when it arrives. So our Yaris is very nearly ready for its MOT. There are still a few bits it needs. The number plate lights, bulbs, they're one of them. And there's a couple of other little bits and bobs, but hopefully we can get this in for an MOT very, very soon. The big job though next, is an exhaust. 